Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use text layers to swap from one text to another in a really kind of a cool and dynamic way. Super easy to update this and to make the changes, and doesn't matter what you type, it'll just do it automatically. Mikey's Production Tips is brought to you by Cinema Spice. After Effects tools, video overlays and backgrounds, and sound effects. Now, I know it's been a long time since... Uh, I've done an After Effects tutorial, and if you want to learn more about uh, the reasons why and some of the things I've been working on lately, I'm putting together another video that talks about some different projects I'm working on and uh, things like that. So I'm not going to put it in this tutorial, but you can just click on the link and you'll take you to it there. Um, I love text layers and I love rigging things up so everything kind of moves dynamically. And how this works is we have this text swapper layer, and it's just a text layer, and that's where all of the expressions and the effects and stuff we're going to put on to this layer and then what we have let me actually make them visible we've got two text layers and whatever is in these text layers is what it transitions to so after effects and tutorial and you can see it'll go from one to the other so we can change this to say is rad and it'll be you know after effects is rad <clears throat> and then as far as what it does in between the transition how uh how much it's moving around and pushing around and things like that um, that can be uh really easily manipulated just through the text layers uh here in animation one all the different things i stick in here will affect that and i'll show you that once we get going so I'm going to start on a new composition. And I'm going to just paste in that same background just so we have something nicer to look at. And let's grab a text layer. Call it text swap or whatever you want. Let's just center that and then I'm gonna let's get in the two other text layers so and these will just be hidden most of the time layer start and I'll just duplicate that and call this one layer end and let's take both of those and let's just stick them down below so they're hidden and we can't see them. Now, on this uh, text layer, we want to have some controls. And I'm going to do three controls, even though you really need a slider to make this work. But if you want to be able to turn this into a preset and easily uh, recall it at any time, um, instead of going in and editing some of the expressions, um, we'll, we're going to add some layer controls so we can just select these layers. And then it's easier to use as a preset. So let's go to Effect, Expression Controls. Let's first add the slider. And then let's add the layer control. And we'll duplicate that. Let's uh, name these. So Transition. And then Start Layer. End Layer. Let's go in and select the right layers in the layer control. Now with this transition, um, even though it'll go way up past 100, we don't want it to really, we're gonna just, if we twirl down this arrow, then we have the range of zero to 100, and that's kind of what we're gonna be using. As in zero is no transition, and 100 is all the way transitioned from the first layer to the next. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into the text uh, and the source text and we're going to add an expression here so hold down alt or option click on the stopwatch and it will open up the expression dialog box and we need to bring in some variables which would be the start layer and end layer so let's go let's call it s layer for start layer equals and then pick whip that start layer and then type dot text dot source text with the uppercase T and with the semicolon 
and then E layer equals, let's grab that end layer, and the same thing, dot text, dot source, text. And when you let go, it should be the end layer, because that's the last thing it, I had typed there. Now we're gonna have an if then statement, and this is if, and let's pick whip that transition slider. If this is less than 50, so if it's in the first half of the transition, so put that in parentheses, and then in curly brackets, write what it should do if it's less than 50, which is display S layer, uh, semicolon, curly bracket, else, then curly bracket. If it's above 50, then we write E layer. Okay, end with curly bracket. So as it should be end, layer end, layer start. All right. So as it goes over 50, it'll change. And that's what that's doing uh, with an if then statement or if else. You can take a look at that. Now that's what we do um, in the source text. Now to do all the fancy animations, this is actually really a really simple um, uh, setup and to rig. So let's just do say position. And then I wanna add to this a different selector, a wiggly selector. So we have a range selector and a wiggly selector. Under the range selector, under offset, I'm gonna bring this all the way down to minus 100. And then we're gonna add an expression to the offset. And what we do is just we pick whip that transition. And then we times that by two. And then we add it back onto value. And so what that does is you see it goes from negative 100 all the way to positive 100. Okay, now now that we have that range selector and the wiggly selector, let's put this somewhere in the middle because um, that 50% is where it's going to be the most uh, is going on. And the wiggly selector is going to make things kind of go random. So I can randomize, say, that position. And as I slide across, it'll change from one to the other. Now it looks a little bit weird as I'm just using the slider, and, but if I animate it with keyframes, keyframe that slider, and then go to the end, then you can see there's that. And then there is a little bit of a jump in the middle. That's why you add a little more stuff. So let's maybe have it go a little bit wider and um, That's a little bit crazy. Let's go horizontally. That's pretty cool. Now if we want to change, so layer in, let's have it be tutorial like we had said, layer start, after effects, after effects tutorial. And so then basically anything you want it to do, you can add to this animator one. So we go add property, we can add a blur and we can crank up that blur. And then now it'll get blurry in the middle. Say we want to change the scale and it's all based off of the randomness of the wiggly selector. Opacity. And then if we go into the wiggly selector, right now it's set on two wiggles per second, but we can crank that up to 10, and then it's gonna everything's gonna move a little bit faster. So there's just lots of stuff you can do. Um, let's take off that scale. I'm not really loving that scale. To be able to transition from one to the other. Now what's cool about this is now I can take these, these layers so it transitions from start to end. 
let's put them in order so it starts on top. I'm going to go into the source text of that. And let's change the source text of the first one to something else. So just keyframe, move forward, and let's change After Effects to. And then what we can do, I change it to a new word. And let's keyframe that slider backwards. So from 100 to 0. And you can see After Effects Tutorials with Mikey. Or you know what we could do? Let's uh tutorials. Let's name this one with. Let's just do the whole the whole thing. And then let's go back from zero to one hundred. But in between, we got to change tutorials source text with Mikey After Effects tutorials with Mikey pretty cool pretty simple and it's just using this slider and again if we turn this into a preset then the start layer and end layer and then so if I have different layers here it's not hard coded into the expressions I can just pick whatever layer I want unfortunately you can't keyframe the layer control, maybe someday After Effects will have that ability, but until now, um, easiest way of doing that is just changing and keyframing the source text on those two layers. And lots of cool things you can do with this. So hopefully you learned something great, and uh, thank you for watching. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And uh, let me hear your feedback. Anything you learned cool in this? Um, hopefully there's some cool things you can do, and if you have any cool examples of what you're doing, using this technique. I would love to see them. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.